1924, German psychiatrist Hans Berger made a startling breakthrough. He attached electrodes to a 17-year-old boy's head and recorded these strange oscillating patterns. They were our first window into the language of the human brain. Berger had invented the electroencephalogram, or EEG, a machine that records the electrical activity generated by firing neurons. It would kick off a revolution in neuroscience and tightly bind the discipline to advances in technology. Now, nearly 100 years later, Semaphore witnessed another major milestone. Rodney Gorham, an ALS patient who's mostly immobile, sent us an eye message yes. directly from his brain. Oh, feels good. Gorham has a brain implant called a stentrode, which translates his thoughts into digital commands. This is the first time the FDA has approved any commercial device to be permanently implanted. It's a big step toward the melding of mind and machine. But what are brain implants? Brain-computer interfaces is a technology that harnesses brain signal from the user, interprets that brain signal, decodes it, and then uses the decoded brain signal to control an external device. Now that external device could be something as simple as a mouse pointer, or it can be something as complex as a high dimensional robotic arm. So BCIs are systems that enable people to control computer device solely via brain activity. UCLA professor Jacques Vidal created the first BCI prototype in 1976 demonstrating that subjects could mentally guide a cursor through a simple virtual maze. In 2003, scientists at Duke University implanted monkeys with BCIs that allowed them to control wheelchairs with their minds. And in 2005, Matt Nagel, who was paralyzed from the neck down, became the first human to receive a temporary brain implant. In the last 10 years, the field has been making big leaps ahead AI is playing a major role in enabling this newer generation of brain-computer interfaces. We still don't understand the intricate chatter that happens between the billions of neurons in our brains. But thanks to advancements in AI, we're starting to scratch the surface. Implants equipped with electrodes can eavesdrop on neural circuits, collecting data. And when these neural signals are run through deep learning software, researchers can identify patterns. Then we're capable of predicting what the brain is trying to do, such as I want to eat chocolate, or I would like to scratch my ear, etc., etc. We now have a variety of BCIs for clinical use. The latest is the Stentrode from Synchron, the first brain implant to receive FDA approval for permanent implantation in human trials. The Synchron technology is the first of its kind in that it is an endovascular brain-computer interface, meaning that the recording technology is embedded inside of a blood vessel. What we have figured out is how to get into the brain without doing invasive brain surgery and having a fully implantable wireless system. The stentrode enters the body through the jugular vein and travels to the surface of the primary motor cortex, the part of the brain that controls voluntary movement. Electrodes eavesdrop, looking for patterns associated with attempted movements, like tapping a foot. A device implanted in the patient's chest receives the signal and transmits it to a computer. The AI has been trained to recognize the patient's command. Under pure cognitive control, our first patient was able to click on a search browser, type in the word pharmacy, and search. And Rodney Gorham was able to send us an iMessage. No matter how many times he does it, I'm still amazed. And a lot of times I just turn around and look at him in awe. Just press the video button. Synchron will implant 10 patients as part of its ongoing safety feasibility trial. When we're recruiting patients into a trial like this, we really do our best to inform them 
we can't promise you any benefit from being a part of this clinical trial, but what we can promise you is that you're going to be helping a generation of people ahead of you. When I was 19 years old, I was on a vacation with some friends swimming in the ocean and I dove under a wave. I instantly hit the bottom and knew something was wrong. I did not have any feeling or movement in the rest of my body. The doctor told me that I would never walk again. I would most likely need someone to help me 24 hours a day. Something that gave me a lot of hope was knowing that I was fairly young and I would be seeing in my lifetime some advancements in science, technology, and medicine. Ian Burkhart qualified for BlackRock Technologies clinical trial. He would receive the Utah Array, the first brain implant approved for temporary testing. It seemed like something out of a science fiction movie. They were going to place a implant in my brain that could listen to the motor signals that were still functioning after my injury of when I wanted to move my hand or move individual fingers, essentially bypassing the damaged spinal cord and allowing me to restore function to my hand. We were only using it in the lab. Once that's over, the sometimes the science just moves on without you and sometimes it sits on a shelf. All of these devices right now are created as a medical device to improve the lives of individuals with disabilities. But certainly as technology progresses, anyone may want to use to improve their life, to make them quicker, better, more accurate. ECIs can be used not only for the purpose of reading out information from the brain, but also to writing into the brain. So modulating or modifying brain activity. Researchers can use BCIs to alter neural pathways by intercepting voltage as it's passed between neurons. This is a demo from Neuralink, Elon Musk's BCI company. It shows thousands of neurons activating in a pig's brain when the implant fires. In 2021, the company released this video of a monkey playing Pong with its mind. Now, a lot of companies in the tech world are very interested in brain-computer interfaces, including companies that are not specialized in medical technologies. Investments in BCI technology have skyrocketed. I've been a BCI researcher for, um, geez, almost two decades now, and I briefly left the field of BCI research because I was concerned that technology was not centering patient needs enough. Many of the labs that I was working in were viewing this as a cold calculating engineering problem. A lot of research in brain-computer interface innovation is actually military funded. And our organizations such as DARPA in the United States that are funding research that is aimed at developing brain-computer interfaces that can monitor brain activity. For example, the attention and concentration levels of warfighters. That sounds like a slippery slope, but weirder things have already happened people with Parkinson's disease can now use a technology that is called the deep brain stimulation, which is a brain implant that allows them to minimize the symptoms. There was a case in the Netherlands a few years ago where a patient who underwent DBS treatment developed a very strong music preference for Johnny Cash. I'm wishing more. We do not know why that happened. I think we, we will face this new dimension of uh, existence where we'll have these artificially intelligent devices taking a bigger part in our decision-making processes. I think in the short term and probably medium term, this technology is all about helping people who have paralysis. So the cyberpunk future for this technology is uh, possibly not in my lifetime. With all respect, your monkey playing Pong it's just a monkey playing Pong and it's probably a waste of a monkey. No one cares about your science experiment if you're not ultimately creating a technology that is demonstrably helping patients. 
So it's not just a Black Mirror episode, but it's really a tool that can allow individuals with disabilities to improve their quality of life. Let's start focusing on pragmatic results for patients because they've been waiting long enough.